Hi, this is Mike Kennedy, M005 Kennedy. We're going to make bagels today, and we're going to use Peter Reinhardt's Artisan Breads Every Day. He's written a number of books. He's done a lot of research. So I've decided that I'm going to try this. I, I, you know, I tend to over-research things. So now that we're at the point where I've read everything I possibly can read about it, I've actually decided I'm going to settle on his method which the thing about his method here in this particular book is we use the refrigerator to ferment the dough overnight and he says that gives you uh, kind of duplicates the effects of how it would have been done we have a, we have refrigerators now they didn't back in the day but this is one way to make artisan bread supposedly quickly and easily and it uses the refrigerator so we're going to try it out I've got all my ingredients together and we'll see what happens. Now we're going to be using the recipe in this and to avoid any copyright infractions I'm not going to tell you the exact amounts. I'm just going to show you me doing the method. But uh, this book I got it at Books Million I think. Uh, it's $30. Canada 37 It's got all kinds of different breads in it. Sandwich bread, whole wheat hearth bread, sourdough breads, soft rye sandwich breads, soft and cheesy breads, all kinds of different things. Very well illustrated, uh, very well direct, uh, directed directions, plus it has some philosophy and things he's learned as he went along. I've got a little sheet for sourdough that I'm gonna do later on sometime, but for now we're doing that. So you're gonna watch me make it without the actual ingredients except that ingredient amounts we're going to talk about this I needed something to make to make the bagels really authentically well everybody knows you have to boil them but you have to use malt powder and I looking around at all the stores I couldn't find it anywhere and I went into a brewery store and of course they had all kinds of it so I picked out one, brought it to the counter, told him I was going to make bagels, and he says, well, I can tell you, you pick the one that the person who makes bagels all the time, and that's all they come in for, and never uses. They always use this guy. So I'm using from Maine Brewer Supply on Forest Avenue, Portland, 791 Brew, area code 207. I'm using Mutton's Amber DME, one pound, 599, which uh, is going to make quite a few bagels. This we're going to put in the mixture itself and it's going to be in the water that we boil it in as well. Okay, so first we're going to do the dough. We're going to use the malt powder, which is the big diastatic, non-diastatic malt powder, which is the thing that makes it authentic, I guess, that boiling. But I must admit, I had a recipe once that didn't use that and uh, didn't use the malt powder and I'll tell you it tasted better than any bagel I bought in a supermarket before. Now we're going to put some instant yeast in. And the poodle is over by me trying to figure out what's going on. And we've got yeast in there. Now this method of his uses less yeast because it's depending on a longer fermentation period and that's what's supposed to develop the, the flavor. Okay. Now that I've cut open into this bag, I'm going to reseal the bag in another bag. That's just what I do. Cut up everything fresh as I can. I'll squeeze some more air out of that later. Okay, so we got the yeast, we got the malt powder in there, and then we have some coarse, we need some coarse kosher salt, which is right here. It's interesting, this is a, a salt that's in flakes instead of crystals. And a lot of people who bake and cook use this. Uh, rather than regular salt. So I decided I'd give it a try. Uh, I don't know whether it being in flakes 
makes it uh, dissolve better. I don't know, but that's what I've noticed watching TV that a lot of cooks use this instead of just plain salt. So that's what I'm going to use. So let's put that required amount in of that. lukewarm water. these items first and mix them around. Hey, I'm panning for gold. Look at that. There, that looks mixed to me. Now we're going to put in the flour. This guy always makes a point of saying using unbleached flour. He says all the American brands of flour are fine. Some of them require different amounts of hydration, which is different amounts of water. I'm doing this by volume. He advocates doing it by weight. I do have a scale and I may do that, but right now I'm just doing it by volume. This is just gonna make one batch of bagels. We're just trying it out, I guess. give it a coarse mixing first just to kind of get the ingredients kind of spread around okay then we're going over to the bread uh, uh, kitchen aid machine with a bread fork we could just need this but I've got the machine so I'm dying to try it out okay you can see the bread hook and now we're going to add the dough in here and it says to mix for three minutes first, so that's what we're gonna do. Probably help if I plug in the mixer too. I don't think it's plugged in, it probably won't mix very well without plugging it in. To the directions this wouldn't be that hard to do by hand either so don't let this step stop you know, if you don't have a uh, bread hook and a mixer matter of fact it probably comes out better by hand because you're paying more attention to the dough once you know what you're paying attention to so plug it in hey look at that it's on supposed to be on it. Okay, put it in here. This is the lowest speed. There we go, for three minutes. I am going to use this to just make sure that we get all of the dry ingredients off the edge and they do form into that kind of ball that we want. We're going to do this for three minutes and then rest for five minutes. So we'll be back for the rest. Now I'm noticing here that this isn't exactly forming the ball that it's supposed to. So I'm gonna add just a little more water. I could measure this out and say I'm adding a tablespoon of water, but I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna kind of coax it all together and see if we don't get that ball of dough that he said we need to get. It always seems like if you're making bread to me that 
the ingredients are never exact and the amount of water and flour are dependent on what flour you have or what the humidity is that day. And I can see there's some flour on the bottom still, which I definitely don't want. So we're going to get this all. See, that's one thing with a doing it by hand, you would notice that right off. Put a little more water in. Ooh. <laughs> a little uneven. It oh, sounds like my washing machine. You can see here, we've got a ball now. Uh, I still think it needs a little water, but we're going to rest for five minutes and then we're going to uh, do it again, I believe. So there's our resting for five minutes coming up. We're back again, our five minutes are up. We let the dough rest. It still looks kind of not right. It looks kind of dry to me, so we're going to go for our three minutes again. Uh, my uh, uh, mixer doesn't like this. Oh, it's, it's more of a dough. I'm going to put a little bit more water in. Just down the bottom and it's going to pick up that flour. It's starting to mix it up good. There we go. Okay, I'm going to take it out. This is going to go three minutes. And then it's going to rest for an hour in a bowl. Okay, here we have the ball of dough that came out. And you'll know, just like notice, just like magic, the cinnamon that I forgot to put in for the cinnamon raisin bagels is, uh, is mysteriously in there. So I must have put that in there. So now we put it in here. And I believe he wants me to actually cover it with plastic. My goodness, I thought all cooks use cloths, but let's see what it says here. Okay, bagels. Should be stiff yet supple with a satiny barley tacky feel. I have no idea what that means. Maybe when I cook bread enough, I will. Place in a clean, oh, 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 lightly oiled bowl. Cover over the bowl lightly with plastic wrap and let it rise for temperature one hour. Well, I cheated. I didn't use a cold, clean bowl, so I'll use a clean bowl. Cover it with plastic and we'll let it rise for an hour. Our bowl is now clean. We're going to use some Pam to oil it with. There we go. Put it in there with some plastic wrap and we'll be back in an hour okay I made a boo-boo I was supposed to put the raisins in the last two minutes so of mixing so it's gonna be over mixed a little because I've got to get all these raisins uh, mixed in so that's what I'm doing right now so again it helps to read the direction several times <laughs> I was following through, but I forgot that I was doing the, the variation with the raisins and the cinnamon. Okay, this is a good time to bring up my, my one and only bagel story. Bagels, I believe, were invented for a Belgium king. He wanted bread that had something to do with riding a horse. Well, back then, the stirrups they had were circles. So this baker invented bagels. And uh, the word bagel, I guess, sounds like the word stirrup in their, in their language, whatever language they spoke in Belgium, Belgianese, who knows. But anyway, I'm trying my best to uh, work in these raisins now that I kind of goofed and have already mixed it enough. So hopefully I won't commit the cardinal sin of, of uh, overmixing. My, uh, my bagels, you can see the uh, cinnamon in there. But I got 
mostly in there. Probably could do the stretch and fold technique. I'll put them in and then I fold it. He's got some novel ideas on, uh, well, I, he's got collected ideas. I don't know how many ideas are his own. He also mentions that he collects ideas, but just the whole idea of uh, the stretch and fold technique of, of uh, kneading bread is different than what some people are used to doing, I guess. But it's, it's really interesting in this book when he talks about the development of the artisan bread mo movement. He says basically, you know, the hippies kind of in the 60s went to all whole, you know, they tried to get healthy food and food tasted like crap. You remember, I was alive in the 60s, it was horrible. Okay, then someone realized that there must have been a way that people actually really did it with those ingredients. Here we go. And so they went back and looked at the older techniques and through that, this development of artisan bread came about. Uh, unfortunately now, I believe our wheat isn't really that great. It has nowhere, nowhere near the nutritional value that bread did at one time. When people, uh, Roman soldiers, sometimes all they would eat would be bread. They'd get little loaves of bread. They talked about give us our daily bread, bread from heaven, uh, different things, but bread was a staple. It was something you could live off of because it was so healthy. Now I think you'd have to mix some other grains and things in with it to get to that point. But so here we are. Now we're at the point where we can rest for an hour. Okay, here we're back. We're back in an hour. Let's take a look at the dough. Oh, there it goes. It's risen. It has risen. Now, brush and shape it, I guess. Cut it into six pieces. Even pieces. Like I can do that, but I can pretend. That would mean I would cut it in half and then thirds. There's a half. That looks pretty right. That half looks bigger than the other half. The big half, the small half. Then we're going to cut it on thirds. Hey. Oh, that one's a little small. That one's a little shy. I'll we'll have to uh, correct that. There we go. That one looks a little big. Of course, you could weigh these, but we don't want to get too professional. Okay, we're going to make these into balls by rolling them around like this. I'm going to stick those little bagels back. Those, the bagels, yeah, the bagels. The raisins back in there. Rules looking for something dropping on the floor. My work over here, she expects to get something off the floor from me. I don't know if she likes raisins or not. And remember, that color isn't dirt, it's cinnamon. <laughs> okay, so there I go. That looks like six, almost regular shaped bagels. Okay, so now, whoop, we're going to make them into donuts by making holes in them. He gave two ways to do it. This is the non-professional way. Uh, so that sounded to me like a lot easier than the way he mentioned for the pro that the professionals do it, the way they roll it into a uh, uh, bar first and then join it together. Now these can spend up to two days in the refrigerator before you cook them. So how about that? I wonder how much the hole is going to fill up when it rises some more, I don't know. Whoops. Okay, 
there we go. Now, that's a grease piece of parchment paper. So, there we go. Parchment paper. Says it. Reinhardt says it. I'm going to do it. There we go. Six bagels to ferment overnight, covered with plastic in the refrigerator. Back to you tomorrow. Here we are the day after. These have been in the refrigerator overnight and then they set out for uh, probably closer to two hours instead of 90 minutes. What we're going to do here, we've got, we've got some water boiling, we've got some cold water to test if the bagels float or not, and in our boiling water we've got a mixture here of uh, malt, salt, uh, of course, kosher salt and baking soda. That's what's going to go in there. And again, for the specific amounts and the real directions, make sure you get Peter Reinhardt's artisan bread every day. I'm hoping these will be the best bagels we ever tasted. You can see we have our bo boiling water. We're going to turn it down to simmer. And then we're going to add our combination of salt, barley, and baking soda. And we're going to mix that on. Oh my goodness. Ah. <laughs> oh my goodness. That will teach you. Obviously, I should have let the water cool down a little to simmer before I put that in. My wife's over there laughing at me. Just trying to contain herself. She knows her voice has come out on the video. These are learn together videos. I don't claim to know what I'm doing in any of my videos. So. That's my excuse. I'm sticking with it. Yeah. My wife agreed. Okay, now we're going to try the, the... He says, well, you should tr put one in, boil in cold water. I got cold water and see if it floats. Ta-da! It floats. So they've risen enough. I'm going to take that back out. And get rid of this. We have our oven preheated to 350 behind us. We're going to dunk one, each one in for a short time, then we're going to cook it. I'll show you one or two. Okay, they're going to go for a minute. And there, they're floating in there. Put it on. Then we're going to turn them over. We're going to do that to each one. And then we're going to be ready to put them in the oven. Sorry there, I had a little technical troubles. But here we are on our last few. We put them in for a minute on each side. And we flip them over so the dome sides up, of course. We've got a slotted spoon. And also, I'd like to point out that I switched uh, my uh, parchment paper and oiled it because the other one I didn't think was going to work. So there we go. Now we're ready to go into an oven at 500, and then we're going to turn it down immediately to 450. So that's we'll take a look at that over here. Here we go. Thank you. 
Okay, our oven's at 500. We're going to put them in for, for eight minutes. But we're immediately going to turn the oven down to 450 degrees. It's telling us it's already at that temperature. I'm gonna try the convention bake too. Let's see, if, no, I guess I must have to put a time in for that. Yeah, we're just gonna bake them regular. Okay, there we go. Eight minutes, and we're gonna turn them. I believe. Let's take a look at the bagel book. Okay, put them in an oven at 500, then lower oven heat to 450. We've done that. It's alive. Then we're going to bake for eight minutes. Then we're going to rotate the pan and check the underside of the bagels. Okay, if they're too dark, we're going to put another pan under them. If they're not, we're going to bake for another 8 to 12 minutes until the bagels are a golden brown. Cool on a wire rack at least 30 minutes before serving. So, it will be 8 minutes later before you know it. Okay, we've hit our 8 minutes. We're going to turn them. We're going to also look under one just quickly and see if this. Uh, it's just starting to brown. It's certainly not brown too much. Oh, our uh, parchment paper's brown. <laughs> Shouldn't have it hanging off like that, I guess. So we'll turn. We'll look under these. No, they look okay too. There we go. We're going to take them out at between 28 and uh, 32. So there we go. I'm just going to wait for them to be big alike. Here we are coming down to our last minute. Uh, a lot of the uh, other things he talks about the internal temperature of bread. He didn't happen to mention it with the bagels. So I'm going to just check them by if they look done. But I'm also going to take the internal temperature just to see what they are in one minute. We'll lift one up too to see if it's not too browned on the bottom. Hopefully it isn't. Next time I'm going to use the convection oven. It has a setting for that. I forget how to do it. And we'll uh, try it on the convection setting and that should make it much more even heat. And uh, I guess it cuts a few minutes off the cooking time too. There. Let's just see what we got here. Let's look underneath. Oh, they're fine underneath, so they could cook a little more if they had to. Let's just stick one in. Ooh, nice and crunchy on the outside. That's good. Oh, internal temperature is 204, so I would say they're definitely done. If bread is usually from uh, 190 to 205. So let's take them out and they're cool. Okay, here we are with the important taste testing part. I have a bagel testing expert in the next room. So we're going to prepare a bagel lightly, lightly uh, buttered. She decided not to toast it. She usually toasts it. I don't know if that will be a factor. Uh, I'm going to give her the biggest one. I need the smallest one for my diet. To pretend I'm on my diet today. Oh, that looks good. I 
we'll get it cut through there. Oops! Ah. Don't don't notice that. We're gonna put some uh, butter on it. Not too much, she said. So I'm gonna spread this out. There we go to the bagel tasting expert, then I'll come back and get one. Okay, here we are at the step of the 30 minutes cool on a wire rack. You can see I used the uh, uh, little things off my gas stove, but you can see they're, they're good on the bottom. So these should be excellent. So half an hour, then we'll give them a try, if we can wait that long. This is, in fact, the best bagel I've ever tasted. A little bit more cinnamon. Except for a little more cinnamon. <laughs> that would have helped if I put that in at the right time, too. But, uh... Excellent, excellent. Make them yourself. Get Reinhardt's book. Get some malt powder. Go to a brewery shop. Ask them which one to use. I can't buy it. I think King Arthur sells it. Couldn't find it at any of the local cooking stores. Kind of disappointed at what some of the local cooking stores carry around Portland, Maine. Tons of equipment, but no ingredients, special ingredients. Excellent, excellent. So there you go. You gotta try making your own bagels. Be sure to do the the two steps account, the uh, boiling, and also the diastolic, non-diastolic malt powder. And like I say, it appears the easiest place to get that is from a brew shop that uh, helps you brew wine and beer. There we go. Mike Kennedy today with you saying have a good day. Have a good bite.